hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is lay for those of you who are new welcome to my channel today's video is going to be completely different from my channel but i do think that it is a huge part of you know the beauty industry i'm a beauty channel 100 percent that's not going to change my entire thing is about beauty that is my goal that is where i stand and that is ultimately how i feel about everything like everything it, it has to pertain to beauty in some way shape or form get me got it good okay so for today's video this has actually been a very very highly requested video not just from friends and family but i've also had a few of you my viewers who have hit me up on instagram and have let me know that you wanted to know a little bit more about my fitness journey now i kind of want to take a step back and i want to go through with go through everything with you guys as far as my fitness journey goes where i started and where i'd like to pretty much like plan to be because i'm definitely not where i want to be but i am starting to see progress this is like the beginning of the progress that you see so if you want to know a little more about my fitness journey i highly suggest that you stay tuned and we can move on to the next so i have my little notebook here that i wrote down a bunch of notes i was actually facetiming my father and he gave me some really good points that i definitely want to hit in this video you know i definitely want to mention them and i want to like you know throw it out there so just so that i don't forget anything i am going to look at my handy dandy notes so the first thing i want to talk about is where i started um Let's go all the way back to high school. In high school, actually my friend Delina Gray, if you're looking for fashion, hit her up. My friend Delina actually sent me a photo of myself from high school and I'm gonna insert it in here, but I was very skinny. I had a very small frame. Like when I say I was so small that nobody even paid me any attention. Like my best friend and I were joking about this the other day when I was in high school no one looked at me like I was so skinny while all the other girls were like voluptuous they had boobs butts and curves I ain't have none of that I was just I had this and that's about all I had and I think that's why I gravitated so much sorry my lips are not looking as shiny anyways I think that's why I gravitated so hard towards beauty because you know a lot of it is focused right here or so I thought um as time went on, you know, in high school, like I said, I was really slim. Even coming out in my first couple of years, I was a very slim build kind of girl. I didn't really have much going on except for my face and the fact that I was a black girl with really, really long hair. Like, that's what I had. That's what I had going for me. No lie, like, that's it. Like, when people would refer to me, they'd be like the light-skinned one with long hair. That's, that's how I was referred to, you know? And of course, when it was like me and my best friend, it's like, oh, which one, you know? So moving on into adulthood with maturity and motherhood playing a huge factor in my weight gain, I realized that my metabolism was starting to slow down, which is it happens with everybody at some point in time. My best friend is actually one who is fortunate enough where she doesn't really gain that much weight but that's not the case with a lot of people usually like first baby you're good like you're okay it usually falls off pretty well but as you all know I have three children so by the time I got to baby number three I was knocking on 30 like I was closer to my 30s than I was my early 20s and I believe I had her at 28 so I was knocking on 30 metabolism is slowing down it doesn't matter how you put it it was slowing down and with most people that is the case so the things that I could do in my early 20s like eat cheeseburgers drink alcohol and all that stuff and it really didn't affect my body I could no longer do that at that point in time like now it's like all right girl this, this shit is sticking and I would do things like eat cheeseburgers I would go to McDonald's chick-fil-a I would go out at night partying drinking alcohol and alcohol girls let me tell you that is just empty calories so you're literally like just ingesting fat that does absolutely nothing for your body and of course like when you're doing it it doesn't seem that bad but let me tell you it's bad so I was you know doing all of that and then 
right after I had my third child, Callie, my youngest, you guys see her on my channel all the time. Right after I had her, the weight just started to stick. Now, back in the day when I had Willow and Dylan, I never had any problems. Like, it would fall off. It was like, it wasn't a big deal. Like, I would have my babies and I would go right back to being a size two to four. Like, I think I might have bumped up to like a five, six, but it was cute when I had Dylan. Like, it was a cute weight. Like, it wasn't so much weight because like I said I had been skinny all my life up until that point so when I gained a little bit of weight it looked nice like I had a little booty I had hips and I was good with that fast forward to Callie and yeah like after you give birth you are a little thick because you put on weight for the baby but then after that girl when I say I gained so much weight I went from being 119 120 and I think the highest I had ever been is like 125 to being 165. And that was after I gave birth and that was after the whole six weeks. That was like after, after. So I had like a full, so I had like a full 40 pounds that were unaccounted for. You know what I mean? Like 40 pounds that I didn't, you know, like it is not from the baby. Like, okay, if it's baby weight, like, all right. So like now Callie's like a year and it's like at this point, it ain't nah bruh like it ain't baby weight no more it's weight weight and up until this point my eating habits had not changed at all not even in the slightest like from when I was pregnant and I was ingesting food for me and the baby I was eating that same amount of food like without you know being pregnant and now at that point we're getting into her second year and I'm still looking like we're knocking on year two for after Callie and I'm like no nah. it got to the point where I would go out like for Christmas and even my birthday like my husband likes to he likes to spoil me so he likes to treat me to like things for my birthday so for my birthday he wanted to get me he wanted to take me out but to take me out he wanted you know the whole shebang like he wanted to get me an outfit he wanted to you know like we go to breakfast and we go to like a movie and everything so we were gonna do that and I think we went into H&M I'll never forget this. We went into H&M and we were looking at clothes and he was like, yeah, so what do you want to wear? What do you want to wear for your birthday? What do you want to wear for us to go out tonight? And I was, I was looking at clothes and everything that I like, I was like, I can't wear that. You know, like you try it on, like, I'm not one of those people with that type of confidence where I'm like, oh, I'll wear whatever. No, like, I feel like it has to match. So we went in and I literally bust out into tears because I was like, I can't fit anything in here. I don't want to buy things that are bigger because I feel like that, you know, that makes me feel comfortable in my weight. So I was like, I don't want anything. I got to the point where all I was wearing was sweatpants and sweatshirts, anything to hide the fat. And even with pictures, sometimes I'm like, I can still see that I'm getting chunky and I don't like it. So scratch that. I'm not doing it. So then we get into like November of last year, 2018. So we get to like November. I had had a gym membership for like a good eight months prior to this. And it was actually out by my father's house in um, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. So that was like a 45 minute drive for me, 30 to 45 minutes. So the problem with that is that on days that I didn't feel like going, I wasn't going like that distance was enough for me to be like nope I don't feel like going today you know and so that's that would be my excuse I wasn't going as frequently as I should and when I did I was only hitting the treadmill and I really wasn't even like hitting it hard I was walking I was walking for like 30 to 40 minutes and then I was leaving the gym definitely not enough for what I wanted and that wasn't even like an everyday thing it was like every once in a while you know so there's a gym i go to gold's gym in um columbia i think it's columbia or ellicott city in maryland because i live closer to that direction so my sister-in-law actually works there and when she got a job there she you know she gets discounts on membership so i go up to the gym and she's like oh you should start working out with me now this is what actually helped me get into my fitness journey because like it, it wasn't consistent up until this point so she was like, oh, you should work out with me. And at first I was like, mm, no, don't really want to do that. But 
she's a great motivator, you know? So she's like, yeah, come work out with me, da 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 So I was like, okay. So I started with one day. And then, like, also because I was paying for the membership, it, like, the membership is a little more expensive than, like, franchise, I believe. Like, I think this one is corporate. I don't know the difference, but I know one is franchise and one is, like, corporate owned. So this one, the one before, I think, was franchise. So that's why it was, like, $10. But this one is owned by, like, I guess a corporate office. And I might be wrong. I might be completely wrong. But I actually end up paying, like, $30 a month. Now, since I'm paying more to me, it prompts me to go more. Like, I'm like, uh-uh. I am paying money to go, so I'm gonna go. So I pay, I pay, you know, monthly. So having her there, that gave me, you know, she encouraged me to come. So like, I never wanted to be that person that's like, oh, I'm not coming to the gym with you, like, uh, because I didn't want to see like that fat, lazy person. So I would go to the gym with her, and we worked out once a week on Fridays. So we still do that, like we still work out once a week. It used to be on Fridays and then we had moved it to Sundays and now it's back to Fridays. So I started working out with her. Once I started working out with her, I started to really get into fitness because I was more educated. So I would say the number one thing is to educate yourself. Learn about what you're doing. Learn about what, first you need to know what you want to do. Once you figure out what you want to do, then learn how you get to that point. So then that's when all the little details in between come in, you know? So like for me, I wanted to not only lose weight, but I wanted to tone because it's really like, it's not easy to lose weight, but when you lose the weight, you want your body to tone to like, it can fall off and you still look flabby, you know? But if it falls off and your muscle is toned and is defined underneath, then it looks really good. So that's what I wanted. I wanted to lose and tone. So those are my two goals um, when I, you know, do fitness. Now, some people want to bulk. A lot of times that's men, like they want to bulk up and get all swole. Some girls just want to define their, their muscles so they want to tone more. And I think one is like a trophy something, like there's different terms for it. I will have them up on the screen here. So there's three different terms that I know of when you are going through your fitness journey as far as what you want to do. Um, so that's what I did. Side note, I am not a nutritionist. I am not a trainer. I am not certified. I have like zero experience when it comes to fitness. I'm literally just telling you what works, what is working for me and what I am doing. So make sure that you do your own research. If you need to consult with a professional, just throwing that out there. So once I you know, started working out with her, I started to work out a lot more frequently. I went from doing three days a week to four to now I'm up to five days a week. I have my um, workout split is completely different from when I started. I didn't even really start seeing results like I started in November but my eating was terrible so that brings me to another bullet what I eat when I started working out I was still eating whatever I wanted so from um, November up until like March I was still eating what I wanted so my body was looking okay like it wasn't as floppy and saggy but it was so up and down because I was working out I wasn't doing as much cardio but I was also eating a lot of food like things that I probably shouldn't have been eating so those are the two major things that happened like I wasn't doing cardio and if you're trying to lose weight you need cardio so I wasn't doing cardio and I wasn't eating properly Carbs are not your enemy, but when you're trying to lose weight, they're also not your friend. They're like a little happy medium. So like for me, I have carbs every now and then because I'm sorry, your girl cannot get rid of carbs. Like I just can't. Like my family is a huge, like we always call ourselves the junk food junkies because I love honey buns, cakes, pies, Oreos are my favorite. And I love me some french fries. French fries will kill it for me. And if I smell french fries and they're close enough, I'm going to eat one. So I couldn't cut carbs completely. What I do is I do intermittent fasting where in the morning I really don't eat anything. I drink water and a lot of times that's when I work out. And then by the afternoon I might have some form of carbs and if I do I try to have it around lunch which is usually after I work out. And then for dinner I don't have any at all. So far that has what's been working out for me. And then I will have a day or two 
here and there, not all the time, a day or two where I just eat what I want, just so that I'm not so restricted that, you know, I convert back to eating unhealthy. And it's gotten to the point where a lot of times when I do eat unhealthy and I do give myself those days to eat what I want, um, my body doesn't even want it. Like I'll eat it and I'm like, ugh, I feel sick. Like I'm not going to have any more. So a lot of it's, it's training your body to yearn for what yearn for what it needs. Um, a good tip is when you go grocery shopping, try to shop on the outside of the the outer rims of the grocery store. So like instead of going down the middle lanes, just go around the outside. Everything that you need is on the outside. Fruits, vegetables. Um, I don't drink dairy at all. So I usually have like almond milk um, and then your meats. And that's pretty much all you need. All the stuff on the inside is like processed food, cookies, chips, things that I'm really, I sh really shouldn't be eating anyways. And I, if I do buy them, I buy them for my kids. I buy like, you know, like chips and stuff for them to snack on. That's that. I tr so that's like how my eating pattern is now. So between March and like April, that's when I actually started to see some sort of difference like on my own. So I took a picture in April and I made that my beginning point. Now, one thing I will say is it if you start your fitness journey, sometimes you're going to fall off. It's going to happen. And like when I started my fitness journey, it was around the holidays, which was completely dumb because Thanksgiving and Christmas, I ate what I wanted. So it doesn't matter how many times you have to start. Keep starting over if that's what not, if that's what you have to do. Like keep starting over until starting over is no longer an option. Like you have to continue. You have to make a conscious decision that this is what I'm going to do. So that with food, that's what I did. I just ate around the outside of, I mainly focused on the out, outer parts of the grocery store. Um, and then with training, how often, I'm sorry, <laughs> how often I train. I, like I mentioned before, I train about five times a week and all of my um, training, it used to be upper body, legs, and cardio, like those used to be my three main points. But now in the last few weeks, I've been doing a push, pull, leg, and a cardio and ab focus day. So I work out five days a week. Three, three to four days out of that week, I'm pushing really hard. The last day is kind of like, you know, a, a calmer, calmer like day, I guess. Like, I don't know how to, you know, describe it. So the first day is, okay, so I work out on Mondays. Monday is my push day. Monday is the day that I primarily focus on shoulders, triceps, and chest. I have a baby and my boobs are not the best looking so chest is really important to me to kind of like build that up because if I get a little bit of muscle there then I feel like it won't be as flappy you know. So um, yeah Monday is my push day and I'm gonna have an entire video dedicated to the workouts that I do on what day like not telling you what to do but just showing you like briefly what I do. So Mondays are my push days. Tuesday, which is today, these are my filming days, so I don't usually go to the gym. I usually do like, you know, like a light walk or, you know, something simple, so this doesn't count as a workout day. Wednesday is my leg day, which is tomorrow, which is like my favorite day. Like, I love to work out my lower body. So that's when I do um, hip thrust, I do a lot of lunges, squats, all of that. That is when I'm working on building my peach and my booty. What I learned is that you have to tear the muscle up and then let it heal and that's how you build that tone. Now mind you, all of these days I do some form of cardio. I do about 30 minutes of intervals. So I do a lot of sprinting and walking and on certain days like leg days, I'll do intervals for like 20 minutes and then for a good 10 minutes I'll either do the steps or the ladder because it works out the lower body a lot and since we about to tear them up, that's what I do. Thursday is my pull day. So that's when you work out like the back area. Now, a lot of women don't like to work out their upper body because they feel like it's going to make them look manly. I completely understand. I was one of those people. 
Um, but what I learned is if you want to have a shape, you have to work all this out so that like your butt and your bottom half isn't all like structured and then your upper half is like flabby. Like that's not cute. You want your entire body to be, you know, seamless from top to bottom. So to get that curve, you have to work your back area. So that's why I do like my pull movements. I do a lot of back and, you know, like pulling and that really helps to give you that hourglass shape. So that is what I do for Thursdays. Fridays, that's usually when I work out with my sister-in-law and um, we make that a cardio and leg day. So we do work out our lower bodies, but we also do a lot of cardio. Saturday is strictly cardio for me. It's light cardio, like I'm not like killing myself because I run a lot. So um, Saturdays is my cardio day. So I do a lot of cardio and I focus mainly on cardio and abs. I might throw in some lower body movements here and there if I feel like Friday and Wednesday wasn't enough. But it's mostly focused on abs and cardio. So that's pretty much what I do for the week. And that's how I, you know, keep on top of everything. Now everybody can't do that. At the minimum, I would say three days. Like give yourself three days a week at the gym and have a push, pull, and leg day. And that's it. In between those, I would implement cardio if you're trying to lose weight. So on your push, pull, and leg day, put cardio in there, in those days. So make sure that you have enough time set aside to do all of that. And again, like I said, I will touch on all of this later on when I touch more on beauty. So I think I kind of want to make this a segment because what I've learned is beauty is not just like the beauty industry is not just the way you look well it's not just about makeup it's also about it's also about maximizing your beauty with fitness because the face is always great but it also helps to have the entire package and that's ultimately what i want so with that my goals I want my body to be shapely like I'm not looking at a number as far as the scale goes because I am lifting and I am doing weight training so what I do know and what everyone should know like this is common knowledge I believe muscle weighs more than fat so if I am burning calories and I'm burning off fat but I'm also lifting and toning my muscles the scale is going to be a little so what I've done is I take progress photos what I've noticed is when you take progress photos it's a lot easier to see the change than if you are getting on the scale all the time I do not have endorsement deals I do not have you know people coming to me for me to push products to you I'm telling you exactly what works and I'm telling you the truth because I'm not getting anything out of this. And I used to feel really discouraged when I'm like, oh, you want to get this workout plan, pay $20. And I'm like, girl, I ain't trying to do that. Can you just tell me what I need to do to get to, you know, my end results? And you go to YouTube and you go to Instagram. So you go to YouTube and you go to Instagram to find inspiration to get to your goals, to get to what you want to get to ultimately, like, come on. As a woman, we all want to fit into that little black dress, right? Another thing to keep in mind is the larger you are as far as weight goes, you are more likely to get you are more likely to fall into the category where diabetes becomes a factor, heart disease, high blood pressure, and these are all things that are prominent especially in the african-american community because of things that we eat so my goal is to not be that i want to be at the point where i'm at a decent size where i'm comfortable in my clothes where i'm not seeing rolls anymore where i'm not you know like putting on a bathing suit doesn't make me self-conscious and it doesn't make me feel like i need to you know get a cover-up those are my goals my goals are not like oh i want to be 115 because honestly i don't want to be 115 again like i was really skinny when i was that small and that's not where i'm trying to get to i want to be toned i want my muscles to be defined and i want my body to look nice and ultimately be healthy so that those are my fitness goals um i would love it for you all to follow me on this journey please make sure that you follow me on instagram my stories is where i am constantly posting what i am doing in the gym i will have a couple of videos on here as far as like what i do and how you know i stay on track 
I also highly recommend to follow some fitness gurus on Instagrams. The ones that are not like money hungry, they have a lot of like little workouts. Like if you know what body parts you want to work out, it's great to go. Like what I do is I just save them. I save them on my, um, in my Instagram. So I'm going to show you real quick. Okay. So I have an entire list just dedicated to fitness. So let's say I want to work my glutes and I want some workouts for my glutes because I do my, my workouts every week. I'll just go to someone who has, they usually have like glute exercises. So she'll have like a couple of exercises that I can do if I want to work out my glutes and I'll just add that to my routine for that day. Um, Another thing is I have an app. This is called Fitlist, and this is the app I use to actually put my exercises on. So like, I'll show you real quick. Like this was my push exercise for Monday. So it's like on here, and a lot of the times it syncs to my watch, so I can just go back and see everything that I need to do for that day. Um, so I highly suggest having those two. And then I also have like, I have it, but I haven't been using it. I have a, um, a food app. This is Lifesum, and this is what I used to use. This is what I used to use to track my calories. So, you, you know, you just add everything in, you know. It, it'll, it definitely helps in the beginning. I have tried every single diet you could possibly think of, and none of them have worked for me. So I highly suggest doing your research. And let's get into that little black dress together. Yeah, so that completes my video on my fitness journey. I hope you guys are ready to complete this journey with me or at least get to, you know, a comfortable point because I'm definitely not at the end of my journey. I'm not even close. I have a long way to go. And what I have learned is it does take time. Like, I, and a lot of the videos that I watch, I'm like, well, how long did it take? Like, I believe it can take up to a year to see significant results. But you can see results in, the, in a couple of months, which is something that I have learned. So cardio, l um, low carbs, and if you want to try the keto diet, that is also great for um, a kickstart. Um, keto, lots of water. I don't drink juice. I don't drink juice or soda anymore, like at all. But yeah. So that completes this video. I hope you all enjoyed my little story time and my little video on fitness. Sorry, my daughter really wants to come in the room now. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment down below if you like videos like this or any ideas that you have for fitness videos or, you know, the way the title for this series will be Maximizing Your Beauty with Fitness. That's what it's going to be. So thank you, Daddy, for that idea. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed my content. And until next time, mwah, stay blessed. Oh, make sure to share my content with those who you believe will benefit from it. And it will also help me out a lot. Love you guys so much. Until next time, mwah, stay blessed.